Hello, it's been a while since I, uh, I've done a, a Lego video. These past few days uh, I've had a bit of a brainwave. Um, I'm currently building a uh, Revel Routemaster London bus um, a plastic model. And you know what? I decided I want to make a real one. Well, not a real one. That would be great too. <laughs> but a motorized one. That project, I guess, is still going to go ahead. It's just stalled a bit at the moment um, in lieu of this uh, contraption which uh, befalls us right now. Um, so this is a, a test bed that I've created um, over the past few days. And I'll just explain what it is that we're actually looking at right now. So this is a fluid flywheel. The London bus or the Routemaster actually used a fluid flywheel rather than a conventional clutch. So for those of you who don't know that this video is about a Lego fluid flywheel which is what the camera is looking at right now. Um, a fluid flywheel is basically for those of you who don't know a slightly different way of transmitting power. It doesn't use any physical coupling or connection. It actually uses fluid to transmit force. Um, and that is I believe what I've achieved with this uh, thing in front of us. So. Um, Without further ado, I'll just start with uh, explaining what it is that we've got here, and then I'll actually give it a run as well. I've got it hooked up to the uh, to the battery box here. This is just on my little hobby bench here. This little test bed. Anyway, um, so what we've got here is an electric motor. Um, this is the Lego M motor. Standard sort of motor, I guess. Doesn't have too much torque. It's more about speed, which is what we want. Um, this is, I guess, a motor you could have in one of your LEGO vehicles, such as a Routemaster, should I choose to build one. Immediately behind this motor, you've got here a, uh, a step up. So rather than a gear reduction, I've got a, a gear increase, I guess, in, in ratio. So for every revolution that this motor does, it's turning the input shaft of this coupling, this fluid flywheel, three times. So basically I want to try and spin this fluid flywheel at a, a pretty fast speed, I guess, which is what we want. And, uh, okay, so here's the motor, the uh, the gear step up here, which is a, a 1 to 3 ratio. And here's the input shaft for the actual fluid flywheel. Uh, and this is, uh, this is the pièce de résistance. Excuse the uh, rather crude join there. This is basically a prototype. Um, I don't think I've said that already. So yeah, this is just a proof of concept to prove that it actually works before I actually go ahead and start building the bus um, out of Lego. I'm not going to be putting it in the plastic model. I'm actually going to be building a Lego model of the bus, radio controlled if I can, or wireless. Anyway, so this is the fluid flywheel. Um, so basically it's very simple. If you haven't already realized, it's just two plastic bottle caps. <laughs> I've gone through a few iterations, well here's one I prepared earlier just to try and test out what the best bonding method is for these caps. So basically they're two caps which I've joined together. They need to be joined together pretty sturdily and so what I did initially was I used this uh, model glue here to just bond the two halves together and that seemed to work okay but every now and then I'd find that there would be a split forming. So what I ended up doing was uh, just welding or spot welding these pieces together. Uh, what I could probably end up doing here is just painting this whole unit here so it looks a bit cleaner. Um, I'll explain this whole unit as well in just a second. It looks a bit um, uh, a bit crazy at the moment. You've got a screw up here and all sorts of things going on. Anyway, so this is the fluid coupling. What happens is the motor turns the input shaft which is actually bonded to the fluid coupling case here as well. So as this shaft turns, this case turns as one as well. However, back here you've got the output shaft. Now this is actually free to turn from the rest of the unit, so it's not physically joined in any way to the rest of the coupling. What I've done here is the output shaft goes through, there's a hole here in the case. I've put a little o-ring there because that's currently where most of the oil seeps out. 
um, but I should say that um, I haven't really had much oil seep out which is good even after um, so far extended running on the test bed so anyway I'll get to that more shortly basically this is the output shaft as you can see it's not connected physically to the rest of the flywheel uh, the, uh, the casing or the input shaft at all it's free to turn on its own um, you will see however that even though I'm turning it slowly it's imparting quite a bit of motion or trying to on the rest of the unit so um, that's the basic principle of it I apologize I don't actually uh, have any pictures or anything like that of this unit open you're probably wondering what the heck is inside this thing so basically I'll just explain that now inside um, I'm basically using these parts as like a turbine and a pump so on the input shaft here um, I have one of these followed immediately by another one so they're stacked on top of each other on this input shaft probably about there and there so the purpose of that is to um, basically these holes here as the uh, input shaft rotates this hole or well, this unit here the pump turns and because there's oil inside here as well it basically flings the oil around so the oil is flung outwards as well as back towards uh, another one of these so a third one but this time it's attached to the output shaft so when I'm turning here there's one more of these inside here turning and then at the front as I uh, mentioned just earlier we've got two of these that are actually doing the driving from the motor so this is the driving part and then you've got an, another one here which is the driven part the turbine as it were um, and so basically if you come down here you'll see I don't know if you can see in the video we've got an oil level up to about there okay so we're about a quarter full now from the testing I've done so far it's not good to fill it too far up because then it induces quite a bit of leakage here from this here um, orifice as it were there's no um it's not really a gland or anything like that it's just a simple o-ring that's somewhat compressed by this lego stopper here this yellow stopper it does a good enough job the oil levels up to about there if i just angle the camera down like that so it's about a quarter full or less than a quarter still does a fairly good job I thought um, and you'll see that in just a second as well just what sort of torque this thing can transmit anyway so that level of oil is um, quite sufficient anyway so once the case is turning uh, basically uh, imparts motion on the turbine which then turns this output shaft and the output shaft I've simulated here I've got like a first gear or a low gear in the transmission for example and then this is the output shaft from the transmission as it were um, and then this shaft would probably go to like a differential or a final drive which would have a little bit more reduction in it as well and then finally it will hit the wheels um, of the vehicle so um, I'm going to be doing some torque measuring tests using um, a very complex mechanism called my fingers <laughs> in just a moment just to see how much torque this thing can produce uh, but yeah as you can see I'm just turning the output back and forth and it is trying to impart some motion there on the on the case and then obviously the input shaft which is connected to the case so that's a good start anyway before I run it I'll just show you what we've got here this is the um, oil fill section so part of me it's just a little screw um, that I've just made and what I've done is I've just cut the screw there rather crudely you'll notice that there's a hole in the top of the case so basically what you do is you get your oil like this um, so this is the kind of oil that I'm using anyway um, it's 40 weight oil um, it's silicon oil which is recommended for Lego apparently um, and it's just shock absorber oil for um, radio control cars but yeah I find this oil has worked for me quite well so far it's 40 weight which is quite heavy which I guess is quite good the method of filling basically involves getting the oil filler um, getting the oil can anyway and just putting it down on the hole and putting it in drop by drop it takes a bit of a while but um, once you've got enough oil in there it hardly loses much I've found so far anyway um, when you're running the, uh, the unit so that's good um, it doesn't seem to be leaking too much right now so pardon me while I just um, screw this oil filler cap 
back on. Um, sorry about this, I'll just uh, do that now. You have to make sure that it's in rather snug, otherwise uh, you get a bit of leakage there as you run it. Um, so that should be fine now. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, I'm going to start it up now and we'll have a look, shall we? So um, this part here, as I mentioned, is probably where most of the oil would leak out if it was to leak out. I think I've done a fairly good job here on the actual welds or the spot welds, um, which is basically just I heated up a screwdriver end uh, until it was quite hot and just pressed it down on here. It's worth mentioning I've still got the model glue um, in there as well as a seal, but I've just done the welds on top as a, another measure. Anyway, let's get this thing going and we'll see how it goes. Okay. So it's running now, um, obviously. You can see the motor's running, uh, turning the case. But interesting you'll note is that the output is also turning quite fast. So um, it looks as if we've almost got a one-to-one -one, um, speed here. So the fluid is doing much of the work in uh, transmitting the power. So what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm just going to see if I can uh, try and stop this um, using my fingers. You can hear the RPMs drop, uh, or you should be able to hopefully hear the RPMs drop on the motor as I'm applying more and more pressure to slow down the output. And I must say it's doing a great job of not stalling at the moment. I'm pressing down quite hard, yep, okay I've almost stalled it, there you go. And as you can see it's actually trying quite hard to keep this thing turning. And this is just with 3 to 1 reduction here, so you'd have your final drive which will add some more reduction and give you more torque as well. So look at that. And as soon as you let off, it's back to 1 to 1 speed basically. Um, hardly getting any leaks there. Um, I don't believe I'm getting any leaks. I just took the oil filler off, so um, maybe I didn't put it on quite as good as I could have. But um, yeah, it looks fine so far. Um, and you can hear the RPMs drop as you put the load on the output shaft. So it's amazing how that fluid is able to transmit that force. And yeah, I'm really pushing down hard on this output shaft here, trying to stop it. But um, it just wants to sort of keep going. Um, I'm hardly seeing any leaks at all coming out of there. What I've done is I've wiped down the face of, uh, of the casing here. And so when we stop, I'll just check to see if there's any leakage, any significant leakage anyway. So it's trying to stop this again. And it really does not want to stop. And it's actually slowing the motor down as well. Well, I just saw a drop of oil fly out. One drop, mind you, after all this time. In reality, you probably wouldn't run this coupling at this maximum speed like this for a sustained period. What I envisage doing is um, hooking up this um, this motor to a, uh, a speed um, a Lego remote control with speed regulation on it. So you'd start off at a low RPM and gradually work up, um, increase the power. But you probably wouldn't run it like this at full throttle for very long. Uh, so this is a great test anyway to see how the whole unit holds up. A little bit of vibration there. Oh, I just saw another drop of oil. But so far, it looks good. Okay, so we've got a very, very slight bit of oil loss as it runs, it would appear. But, believe me, I've had this casing split on me while it was running, and the oil mess was just fantastic. <laughs> so, the way that it's going at the moment, I think it's sort of fairly good stage of development and um, it's enough to continue spurring me on um, when we stop it you'll see that the oil will sink back to the bottom so I'll just do that now and hopefully you'll see this on camera not sure if you're seeing that at the moment yep you should see there that there's a little sump of oil now forming because the coupling has stopped, the oil um, 
naturally uh, lowers down and I think it's about there at the moment so the oil has now reached the bottom of the coupling now that we've stopped it um, and having a look around I've hardly got I don't think I can see any real oil there is a light residue over the whole unit that's just <laughs> part of development I guess um, and the filling process which can be a bit messy at times but yeah it seems to be sealed up quite well um, considering that there's quite a bit of oil being flung about in there um, so hopefully this video sort of explains um, the basic concept of the fluid flywheel and I'm very happy that I've gotten it to work actually um, on this uh, Lego model since I was quite young actually I always thought how on earth could you get a, a fluid flywheel to work in reality let alone Lego and now looks like I've done it so just having a look down here we have a very slight tinge of oil there's certainly no drops there's nothing there that's actually working its way down um, if anything I could probably just improve this seal a little bit more uh, but it obviously helps that the oil level is only about there if I was to fill it up any further like up here definitely you'd be uh, leaking out of here to begin with so um, I did a bit of an experiment before I filled it up to about there uh, about almost the level of the bottom of the output shaft and I did find that there was quite a bit of leakage as you ran the unit but now it seems to have settled down uh, it's found its happy medium of oil level I guess um, and yeah it seems to be quite happy so pardon the uh, the roughness here it was looking a lot better before I had to weld it um, when I just had it glued together it looked much better but this works anyway so that's the main thing um, and I'm just going to run it a little bit more just to see what it's like. It's just amazing, isn't it? That it just wants to keep turning. And it's all thanks to fluid. Haven't seen any oil drops. No load. You can see that both the input and the output seems to be turning at pretty much the same speed which is fantastic put a bit of load on RPMs drop which tells me that it's doing something meaningful it's actually trying to turn the shaft and yeah, I'm holding it down quite hard here and it's um, yeah certainly with this gear reduction um, and the final drive in play as well eventually certainly this appears to be more than enough force to propel a Lego vehicle and it's also very cool as well being a fluid drive all I need now is basically a, um, a automatic transmission I guess <laughs> to back up behind this unit and then I'd have the real Route Master experience anyway that's it for now thanks for watching apologies if the video is a bit long I uh, just thought I'd get this out there um, so here's the uh, Lego fluid flywheel Cheers, thanks for watching.